grandson, one for my other grandson. They keep coveralls and gloves and stuff that's theirs in there. Refrigerator, sink, bathroom. We'll go upstairs in the end. We'll save that for last. There's a little sand table that my grandkids used to play with. They would sit back here and play construction like a sandbox. It was you could sit at the chair instead of being down on the ground. Various aprons, my office. An autographed picture of Mike Rowe. I actually met Mike at a Caterpillar show and he was a really great guy down to earth, spoke with us like he knew us. And, and I'm very much in agreement with, with his whole thing about how the trades are dying and all. I'd love to sit down and talk to him about that. This is my office. This is my box with everyday go-to tools that I use the most so that I can find them the easiest. This is my main toolbox with all the more specialized tools and tools I don't necessarily use every day, but that I do need every day. Various pieces and parts and scrap steel. I don't throw anything away. It seems like you always have a use for something small. The work table and wheels that I built. And I can roll all around the shop right to where I'm doing any work. This is the bench that I do 90% of my stuff on. I have a bench here. All the little bits and pieces and parts. I learned a lot of these storage techniques from watching YouTube and started to incorporate them into my shop especially some of the smaller pieces and parts and the little containers it was easier than having them in the little drawer sections like they used to have. More storage, jack stands, technical books, shop safety equipment, glasses, masks, earplugs. I do heat the shop with a wood stove when I'm in here, but if I'm not in here, I've got a gas furnace hanging on the ceiling over here. We only use it to keep it up above freezing in the winter time. Usually if I'm in here, I like the fireplace. It keeps it really nice. Everything I work on, I try to keep all the scrap steel and pieces. Steel's getting expensive and it's, it's hard to find now. And something new I've started is when I have a drop piece now, I write a measurement on it and put it away. That way it's easier for me to find stuff. I doubt that I'll ever go back and do that to everything that's already there. But anything new that I'm adding to the, to the uh, situation every year, I try to do that so I can glance down and see what I've got. I've got an old anvil here that my father gave me for Christmas years ago. He found at a farm auction. Um, I don't do any blacksmithing or anything, but it's just anything to have in the shop. This used to be my office when I first built the shop. I just use it to keep brochure or um, the technical things that come with power tools and all so I can come in here and find any specs. I got a cabinet full of shop safety equipment here, earplugs, face masks, um, safety glasses, that sort of thing. Very old vice that came out of my wife's uncle's house in New England. Uh, we were up here on a trip and they wanted to know if I wanted any other garage and we, we took this and brought it home. Vices like this are, are hard to find. Old Arbor Press that I bought at an auction. My MIG welding plasma cutter set up. I built this so I could have it all in one cart. Cart washer. Uh, this is where I drain all my funnels and oil cans and pans and stuff into a bucket. The waste all goes into a bigger tank outside. Everything over here is paint related. Anything that I need in any, any painting, either here or anyone in my job. Spray 
paint, paint, and goes, this is the warmest corner in the garage too, so I know it's, none of it's gonna freeze. More scrap steel, my torch setup. More small parts, plumbing parts, valves, stuff like that. Up here is all my bigger pieces of steel for any repairs or fabrication projects we have. This is a very old South End lathe that I'm in the process of fixing up. I need to make a few parts for it. I need to make a bracket to hang a motor on it. That, that'll probably be a future video. This is an old lathe that I'm taking some parts off of. More tools, chainsaws, gasoline drill. We used to do a lot of retaining walls, chop saw, power tools, generator. This is a bench that we made. There is or will be in a future video. A bear belt so that I can run track equipment in on the floor without the chewing that floor all up. Got a small crane here with an electric hoist for working on stuff. Some things we can pull things off of equipment, usually it's pretty heavy. Chains, binders, hoses. to do as many of our tire repairs in-house as we can. Um, parts, pieces, tubes for the tractor tires, we always did all that ourselves, mainly because I just couldn't afford the downtime of dropping it off somewhere. This is my grandson's workbench, Jackson. This is my grandson's workbench. He's got all of some of his own tools and things that he helps me fool with in the garage. Here's a backhoe that we're doing some service work on. This is our promoting tractor. This is one of the newer pieces of equipment we have. This is mainly for working around the yard and the shop. This doesn't go out until we go out on those jobs. Uh, this is my grandson's favorite piece of equipment because it's just his size. Yeah. I've driven it before, though. It's just his size, it's a little tight in there. Every garage needs a 65 inch flat screen TV. A lot of times I just turn it on for background noise or if I need to watch something on YouTube, I'll find a picture or something out. Every, every garage needs a reclining chair on wheels. I have been known to take a nap back here on a rainy day. Um, this is a small table we made out of an old pipe vise. My grandson would sit back here and watch TV and he'd always say, Pop, we need, a, we need like a cafe table to sit or drink something. Made this out of some scraps we had laying around, laying around the shop. All right, let's go upstairs. These are the steps up to the steward's loft. They're a little steep. He makes to call this the ship's ladder. You got to walk forward and come down back. You can't turn around and walk straight down. Our air compressor up here will pop the bathroom so it's out of the way. All right, I save all these old coffee containers. You always seem to have hundreds of difference of nails and screws and stuff, and they're, they're useless if you can't find them when you need them. Uh, spare seat, spare parts. Literally tens of thousands of dollars worth of motor oil, grease, parts, filters, all things that fit every piece of equipment that we have. Here's the various filters to fit every piece of equipment we have so when I do a service on a rainy day say it rains tomorrow morning and I can't do what I planned on doing and I want to do some service work I don't have to chase parts down. And there you have it there's my shop. Couple pieces and parts and tools in here to keep my, my screen equipment going. Sometimes it's not an idea of whether you can get it fixed it's whether you can get it fixed.
fixed fast. If I stop to go get a part or take something in to be fixed, that's time lost and I, then I'm not making it. Jackson?